Hello, welcome to the footy chat. This week with the star of Australian stage uh, of the... Is it still TOEFOP or have we changed the name of it? Is it... Are you asking me? Yeah. Because like, this is a weird way to introduce someone is halfway through the introduction, <laughs> ask them for details I, about the introduction. Well, I'd rather it be done right, Will. Is it yeah, TOEFOP? It, it, it's Will Anderson here. We yeah. can then backdate it. We'll, go, we'll, <laughs> we'll memento this. We'll Benjamin Button the introduction. We'll say who I am and then explain who I am, which is... I'm very bad at this. So if you wouldn't mind hosting, I would genuinely really appreciate it. So Yeah, so it, I'm I'm essentially the generic white guy you see hosting everything on the ABC <laughs> who is in Adam Hills. And uh, I've been around forever. Uh, I used to be a young person. Like I used to be like you guys, like young, I was young and young people liked me. And now every time I step on stage in the media, I'm a reminder to my audience that they are also old. Yeah. <laughs> they look at me like, how dare you? How dare you get old? Because if you're old, we're old. <laughs> that, that's I, horrible. I, my memories of you and like, because I remember being in high school and coming home from school and usually on a Wednesday night, you would be there doing something, probably mm. glass house. Yeah, glass house. And um, my first memory of you was that like that you wore thongs with jeans and 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 that you were a real symbol of what is now double j in that you were the like cool <laughs> older to us person and it was you and Corinne and Husey and, mm. and all those kind of people. And but that's exactly who I am, Broden, is <laughs> that like I like in Tom Ballard's book, you know, he's mm. like, you know, I hate boomers book. Um, <laughs> in Tom's book, he like lists people of different generations who are emblemic of that generation. Yeah. And yeah. I am so emblemically Generation X. You like, are just that You're real, yeah. real missing generation of Generation X that no one's like didn't like got some of the good times, but the good, like it was yeah. kind of that, that every time I've gone into a commercial radio station, there's always that thing of, oh, mate, like they, the DJs used to do cocaine off the desk. <laughs> it was an all-night party. It was wild. Oh, and right. it's always like, oh, when did that stop? Oh, yeah, last week, mate. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> you're like, you feel like you've just missed every – your generation have just missed every – important thing or fun thing it's just gone because that's how i feel as well for our generation is that like we, we we donna does a podcast out of where triple m is made and you go in there and go i think this is just about to end and you go like and that's how i feel as well but it's interesting to know you feel that as well oh yeah and but I, i'm of that generation that had the internet for half of so yeah. I, i'm 50 in a couple of weeks and the internet's been around for about half of my life mm. And so we can all – there's two things that have happened within our lifetimes that are – well, three things, I think, that we can say are these groundbreaking things. One was the global pandemic. Clearly, yep. that was a big thing for all of us to go through. Um, you know, I think that there was the invention and then the adaption of the internet as mm -hmm. like being this big thing. I had half of my life without that and then half of my life with that. And then, of course – the Bulldogs 26 yeah. in that <laughs> drought. Right. Like, I mean, is really, let's bring it back to the topic that we're here to discuss <laughs> that's today. The, that's but. the two things you are the face of for me is that you're, you're the, my childhood watching comedy in mm -hmm. Australia. You are yeah. Australian comedy in our, in, in our childhood. But then also in 2016, uh, you were in many respects the face because also your wonderful podcast with our mate, Charlie Clawson, uh, Two Guys, One Cup, up until that point was about two two men whose teams do not win premierships and that's what their identity and brand is built on, the fact that you don't, yeah. you're, you go for teams that don't win flags. And then what was it, 12 months into this podcast or a little no, bit? No, so that's, that would be lovely if it was 12 months in. <laughs> but in the, in the year of our Lord, 2016, yeah. uh, Charlie Clawson and I, uh, we did, yes, we do another podcast called TOEFOP. This is where this intro started. Um, <laughs> Please welcome all, Will Anderson. It's very confusing. All of them are now at a feed called Every one relax so you can find we'll lost right. the toe fop fo fop uh, our footy podcast the cricket podcast anything that charlie and i make he has a t tales of the unexplained podcast like we do a whole bunch of projects i guess like like donna do in yes. that there's you know there's different members who do different things and all under this one banner. We have a weird one where it's just Charlie and I, but we still do that, that same model. <laughs> we have the working dog model with just two people, basically. It, it, from, from afar, it feels like two uh, really cool m people living in far, in like 
in the north somewhere. I can't even know, say for sure where you both live, but you appear, every time I get in contact with either of you, you appear to be like just coming in from the beach or you've had a <laughs> like you've just gone out for a beautiful organic lunch and you've and you just do f and you do fun things and talk about all your fun adventures together on the internet every day. Well, I wish that I could dispute the categorization that you've just made of me, but literally I have come like via the doctor, via the organic bakery that I went to this morning to pick up some bread, and this afternoon I am going for a swim. Yeah. So you are absolutely right. Oh, you categorized it. And so Charlie and I bonded many years ago, 20 years ago. We were guys who became friends as adults and sometimes that can be a hard thing for men to do is like you know make a new friend as an adult yeah. and mm -hmm. so we were podcasting before podcasts the way that we became friends with each other was that we would be the guys in the corner of the party who would eventually be having these dumb old conversations about wrestling or afl footy or whatever it might be and I guess we bonded over that idea and I know that your podcast is like started on this premise as well, which is I love AFL football and Charlie loves AFL football, but we didn't love it in the way that the traditional media narrative of AFL football was told, yeah. you know, whatever the cliche of AFL football might be and the broad stereotype of AFL football, Charlie and I are. Yes, inner city soy boys, <laughs> but also like, you know, AFL football and like would like to have dumb conversations about AFL football mm. and often we're more fascinated by some player's new haircut. You know, yeah. The fact that like Trent Cotchen like, you know, clearly was a just cuts guy and spent no more than $17 <laughs> on his haircut, you know, and then one day moved to a more expensive barber and that was when he did not play well for a while. Yeah. And he went back to the simple just cuts haircut and I want to talk about that. That to me, that says more about how I like to watch AFL, but, but yes, the thing that bonded us was he's, he's a Saints fan and I'm a Bulldogs fan and uh, both of our teams had only won one premiership and so that was something we would often debate was the idea of <clears throat> is it better to be Charlie who had seen his team lose grand finals or was it better to be me who had lived my entire life without ever seeing my team appear in a grand final. So the Bulldogs have only ever been in two grand finals. It had been in two grand finals in my lifetime, 1954, which we won, of course, uh, and then 1961, which we lost. And so in 2016, Charlie and I started Two Guys, One Cup. And the, <laughs> the name of it was because both of our teams only had one cup. And in 2016, the opposite of 61, reverse the curse, the Bulldogs – the un unlikeliest of all premierships mm. that I, of course, we loved. And, you know, the brilliance of the fact that it's all documented, you know. Mm. Like we, I can go back to 2016 and go from us – like we went into that season – people forget this about the Bulldogs, but, you know, we'd lost our coach, we'd mm -hmm. lost our captain, we'd yeah. lost like our best – like the Bulldogs had been decimated. Yeah. Like it was one of – and the massive turnaround that came for – I, I was resigned to the fact that I thought I would never see the Bulldogs play in a grand final in my lifetime. I mm. got to that point in my life where I was like, I just don't, I don't think it's going to happen. And so all we had to do was start our podcast. Yeah. But that, that year, you're entirely right. From my memory, there was, I don't think you were in the top five predicted to, as you drink out of an ABC mug, by the way, that's just fantastic. <laughs> just, uh, and for the record, the uh, the equality yeah, LGBTQI <laughs> like could not be more ABC. Yeah, the most ABC man in the ABC world. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that year, I, you weren't the team that everyone was predicting would go on and win the flag. I remember no. going out to Ballarat to see a preseason game. I think it was sixteen uh, between Melbourne and the doggies. And it was, I remember you were a rising team, but in, and this was in a period when the AFL was not for the small teams. There was, the, it was moving in the direction of major league baseball or NFL, where it was like the only, only the big teams win. And so the, the, uh, every, I remember we, we were, I think we were doing a comedy festival in Perth or something when you won that first final. And it was like, well, that's really great for this young team to be getting that experience. And then the next week, it happening again, and then the and then the famous GWS game. Do you prefer the GWS game to the Sydney game, or is the grand final just feel which one feels more special, or are they they're all different kids? Or 
Okay, so the the incredible thing about like I mean because everything you say is absolutely true, and there are people who will say the Bulldogs weren't the best team that season, and I agree with them. <laughs> the Bulldogs were not the best team that season. That's why they finished seventh. But here's what the Bulldogs did have to do. They won the finals. And the reason we have the finals, I remember <laughs> going to the grand final like uh, one time and I asked Lee Matthews, I saw Lee Matthews and I said, Lee, who's going to win today? And he goes, I don't know. That's why they play the game. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I agree with that. And it's what I love about AFL, which is you play the season to qualify for the finals and then you play the finals. Yeah. And there is no one in the world who cannot say that the Bulldogs were not the best team in the finals that year because we had to go to Western Australia yeah. to beat them. We had to go to GWS mm. to beat them. Who else did we – like? and uh, I'm missing one as well. But they were all away games. We had yeah. to do it all the way. We were always the, the team that was not favoured during that final series and we had to keep winning to get there. So it I may- was not in Australia for the GWS final. Okay. I remember exactly where I watched the GWS final. I went home from Charlie and I doing TOFOP Live at the LA Podcast Festival <laughs> <laughs> and I went home to my apartment while everybody else was partying because so, I had to watch GWS oh my God. and uh, the Bulldogs on my computer. That's in- we were actually in LA. Yeah, for the we Grand- were there as well. Yeah. The Auntie Donna did its first show at Largo at the Coronet in uh, in LA uh-huh. the day before the AFL Grand Final. And I remember we were, we were taking off as Tom Boyd kicked the Grand Final goal. And I remember going, "They're going to win their first Grand Final." It was re- and then as we landed in Melbourne, so we're in the air for fifteen hours. As we landed back in Melbourne. It took the runway that comes in from the port. So we, I looked at the right window. I have a photo of it, and you could see Whit Noble just covered in blue, mm. like fans at the Grand. It was a very cool experience. We, we, I didn't get what, to watch the game, but I did. I want to ask you about what you said before about the way that we play finals because I think that's – it's not unique, I guess, because NFL does it as well. But in NBA or in baseball, it's a – there's this idea that we're going to find the best team of the year because when you win, it's a series of seven. And in the EPL, in, in football, when you play that, it's just the ladder at the end of the year, mm. essentially. And so that's it's decided through the year. Where does the joy in that come from? I actually like watching watching football or EPL, the, the idea that you're just at whoever's at the top at the end of the year, how does anyone derive any joy from that? Gradual joy. Gradual joy. People who like their joy to just be incremental <laughs> <laughs> throughout the season to slightly experience little bits more yeah. joy, little bits more joy. It's, it's not It's not what I love. Yeah. And it, sometimes it's about how you're raised, clearly. But the, the most recent example I will give of this exact like same thing, I think, is the ICC World uh, One Day Cricket yes. Tournament, right? Mm. India are the best (laughs) team on paper in the world. There is absolutely no doubt about that. That entire tournament was set up for India to – but it wasn't a you win the most and there's a ladder and they give someone a trophy. Mm. The way that it works is they then play finals and anyone on the day, that's why they play the game, right? Yeah, yeah. And the joy that comes from seeing like a great team or a team that was meant to win – defeated on a, the day by a team that plays, you know. It's, I mean, that to me that I don't know why you would not want that joy yes. in your life, but also you then you have to live with the devastation. The misery as well. Yeah. Right? That's, the, that's the discussion, is it? Because yeah. you, you, as you said, you would have had feedback from people saying that Bulldogs weren't the best team that year. It, yeah. doesn't, it does not matter in any way. It's no. about who got there first on the right day. The, um, it's the, the Collingwood this year, last year won the flag – by a cumulative, what, six to seven to eight points all up. Beat mm. Melbourne by two points, beat GWS by four, yep. and then the grand final by less than a goal as well. Yeah. That's magical. Mm. And while you don't want to live through that in any way, shape, or form, I mean, we would have both felt it in 2021, Will at different periods. Halfway through the third quarter, I was ready. I, I felt it deeply, and then, we, you know, we, it, mm. it, you don't the, want to. Do we want to identify the exact moment? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> It was when I was sitting home alone, of course, because it was COVID, yeah. you know. Um, you know, I'm a Bulldog supporter, not a Melbourne supporter, so I couldn't sneak across the border. No, no, I was... But, uh, <laughs> but no, I, um, 
I was watching Home Alone, you know, very different experience to 2016, clearly. I was there at the game, you know, being able to sort of enjoy the entire experience of it. But, um, you know, Home Alone, very different, like, and literally alone, you know, in my yeah. house by myself <laughs> in lockdown. Um, I decided the best way to do that was to uh, have an edible. So I've also <laughs> taken an edible, which is a very different experience <laughs> to 2016. And I'm sitting at home on my couch and Bontempelli kicks that goal and Brian Taylor yep. talks about how the Bulldogs are going to win the premiership yep. and Bontempelli is going to be the Norm Smith medal. Yep. And I realised I hadn't spoken, obviously, for two hours. <laughs> I haven't talked to anyone. And I say out loud to no one, Shut the fuck up, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that, Mark. I think he said something like, they're, he's going to get the, um, he's the norm. It's the Norm yeah. Smith medal. Yeah. Um, oh, man. It's been a, it, I've, I've listened through the years and, and, and loved watching long. I, I'm, I'm curious to know from you, has the, has talking about footy this much in a objective sense allowed you to, to very clearly in your mind say what you love about footy? Or because I find it hard to grasp exactly what I like about footy, and I think most people who watch mm. footy would think that they, what what what's the precise thing they love? How do you, how do you grapple with that question? Uh, well, here's what I'll tell you that I have learnt about myself, and I can say about myself a hundred percent. I love footy. <laughs> like I love footy more than I love the Bulldogs. Now, some people mm. are supporter first. You know, mm -hmm. I love my team, and then I love the game. Mm. I actually probably get more joy out of watching other teams play each other than yes. I do out of getting my own. There is a different emotion of watching my own team. There's nerves and frustration and those sort of things that I – but to watch football, to watch like teams play against each other, like I probably watched 18 North Melbourne games last season <laughs> and love them because yeah. you're just watching this – young teams start to – these like, you know, these players start to emerge. And, and if you love the game, like seeing – future you know some a team that's been in a bad place for a long while see those sprouts of them starting to like turn the corner not quite being there yet it's like watching a baby giraffe learn to walk mm -hmm. you know it's yes it's magnificent and yeah. i love the game so i love every aspect of the game and i think that the reason i do is this i love that it's an oval ball the reason it's an oval ball and we play finals is that <laughs> like it isn't a computer program. We're mm. not going to feed in all this information about who the best players and who the best team is and then just print out at the end of the season, you know, who's going to win the game. The ball can bounce the wrong way and that can be the difference, right? There, there is no game in the world that leaves so much up to the umpires <laughs> just deciding what the player's intention was. Yes. Like, you know, not only am I going to enforce these rules while I run 14 kilometres in a game that's 360 <laughs> degrees played by people of all different sizes, you know, in just in like absolute chaos at some times. But you know what? This rule, you've also got to read his mind a little it's, and it's, see what he was thinking. It's, right? artis it's like, an artistic, it's the most yes. artistic sport because it's taking, uh, the, the umpires are critics and they're going, what you did made me feel this and thus <laughs> I give you this response. It's not... You hit him in the hand, so it's this. It's I felt this. Mate, that's – and so much of – you look at like a game like NFL or baseball or these sort of things, right, that often there'll be a celebration. You know, the NFL players, you know, there might be a celebration of what they've achieved. The soccer players, there might be a celebration of what they've achieved, right, afterwards. Ours is the game that has that built into the play itself. Mm. Like no game has a – component of the game where a high mark is like taking speckies is really kind of unnecessary yeah. like there'd be a different sport <laughs> that would be like you know what let's just kick it a bit longer and catch it on your like in your tummy yeah. you know like that's how we do it from now on we have a game that rewards these absolute moments of creativity and chaos and the way someone kicks the goal the performance of it the like i we get mocked because you re get rewarded with a point yeah. I, I'm like, no, 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 that's great. Mm. I love that we give you like a point for having a go, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I f yeah, I feel the same. It, it's so much of it, do you think as you get older and there's more memories connected to it that it, it takes on a special meaning as well? The idea of, well, I, I, I talk a lot with younger people about when I played footy and, and, and 
my experience with footy when I was a teenager was a different experience to the moment that I started to pursue a completely different career. As soon as I went to acting school and I had a focus and a drive to go and do something else was the moment that I really became hyper-focused on AFL because I don't know what it is. I get the idea that I, that's never going to be me. I'm never going to be mm. that person. That it allowed you to it, allow, it allows you to fixate on something that you have absolutely no control over and to be able to have fights that at the end of the day mean not that much and to but in some way the moments of elation you feel are as, as big a moments as you have in your life, I think. I think so too. And I do think that there is something that draws creatives to Aussie rules in particular. Like you it's yeah, I do. Because to truly understand it and enjoy it, a lot of it is like defined by its limitations, you know, defined by the fact that so much of the game is open to interpretation, that so much of it is imperfect, that we have this game that isn't played by one particular type of human. Like, you know, if you lined Caleb Daniel and Mason Cox up for people who did not know AFL and went, mm. they play the same game, you'd be like, <laughs> I don't reckon that's true. I don't know how that could possibly be yeah. that they play the same game, you know, and that we have this game that rewards that I think a lot of it is in the interpretation and I think it that's why I, I think that fans sometimes do themselves a disservice when they think when they crave for things to be black and white. Mm-hmm. Because the truth of it is that we have a game that if you are going to complain about every why was that a, not a push in the back versus that being a push oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Like like you're not gonna enjoy the game. That you've just got to kind of roll with the fact that it, it's an imperfect game and it kind of in the end, it all sort of works out in the wash. Mm. But part of the joy of it is that it's an imperfect game. Like when you look at AFL player lists, they look like Lord of the Rings characters going on a quest. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's just all sorts of different like, and my axe. Like and you're like, where's that guy come from? <laughs> like there'll be a preppy guy versus a guy who looks like a caveman versus yeah. whatever. And I think there is a poetry in that. There's a poetry in the stories. And there's this weird... It's a weird sport, right? Like, because it's only Australian. We don't play it anywhere else in the world. It is ours, both its limitation and its, like, you get to, you know, like, sometimes we love Paul Kelly because Paul Kelly's great, but also because the rest of the world never quite got Paul Kelly, yeah. right? Mm. And, you know, he's popular in other places, but, like, he was not popular anywhere else like he was popular in Australia. He feels very much like ours because... He didn't go off and like become somebody else's. He's ours. And I think that like Aussie rules football has that as well. Like there are so many things that are so anachronistic about it. The fact that there's still so many teams out of Melbourne. Like, I mean, can you imagine if you're designing a game from scratch in today's day and you came in, like I'm the guy, it's like day one and I'm just like, yeah, we're going to have like, the team, yeah, we're going to have like 18 and they're like, oh, great. So we'll have like three teams in each state. No, 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 Two in every state and then eight in that one. That's what we're doing. 100%. It's funny you talk about the way Paul Kelly, it's his ours. I feel exactly the same about the magic that's Kane Corns. And like that's half of my love of the AFL world is that is the media around it. We have this weird, bizarre pocket where there's a self like self-feeding media organization that fills up multiple radio and television stations every week talking about a sport that no one in the world in the world knows about and that's such a huge love for me and I know for you guys as well we um I love that too I think that oh, there is a clip like on so after the bulldogs won in 2016 so on the friday night adam spencer and i had gone on <laughs> AFL 360 because he's a Swans fan yep. and I'm a Bulldogs fan. And so we went on AFL 360 and I got a little carried away and sort of just went on this rant about, you know, what we'd done and how I thought we were going to win and, and whatever. <laughs> and on Monday, so you guys will know this, but like there might even be people listening who don't follow AFL 360 as closely <laughs> <laughs> as, as I do. But or, or you or I, yes. <laughs> that. They, they, the people who make the packages on their shows are some of the most incredible work of anyone who edits video in any sport in the world. They Preach. make these incredible storytelling packages. Mm-hmm. They're 
like intellectual. They're not just like, you know, like heavy music and wrestling promo style things. They can absolutely tell a story. Like the way that they'll put them together with people's quotes or different radio grabs or the same moment with different, like, I mean, they do quite complex work, again, within this little world that we, but they do incredible stuff with it. On the Monday after the 2016 grand final, the Bulldogs, you can find it online, I know, because I look at it all the time. But the one they did about the Bulldogs grand final is essentially narrated in part by me that oh. cut up that rant that I did oh. on the Friday night and then, you know, put in the clips and the moments oh, and the whatever well. in between this thing. And you, you know when sometimes people oh. ask you what's the biggest thrill of your life and, mm. like, they're expecting you're going to say, well, I did this gig with this really big star or I was in this place. But, but that is the biggest thrill yeah. of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that when people look back on 2016 and they if they look at that clip and it's such a great clip that it just – you're the but orator. The, the That's great. The, yeah, the great kind of to be actually just in such a small way part of that moment. But that that footy media they do often do incredible work. Mm. Oh man, hundred um, percent. But no, you deserve to be there because that's you are you are a great voice of footy, and we and we're very grateful to have you talking about it. Um, it's been a wonderful chat. I said to Tom before this, I'm like, I don't know what we're going to talk about. I'll write down a few questions, but um, I've got a feeling Will's going to be able to just bring it and you absolutely did this has been talking one day. <laughs> you're it's a master right. like, the a... only skill that i have i'm sorry Tom, <laughs> he made really, me i'm sure you like questions or something I no, 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 no. <laughs> this is he likes it. he's having the best i can genuinely yeah. tell he's having a really good time i like listening <laughs> <laughs> he's pod- but doesn't like podcasts yeah best podcaster <laughs> um my last question is uh, how do you feel about the doggies this year my feeling is that it it's it's a last chance saloon for Bevo, potentially. Uh, but it, mm. um, in, I feel like you have, and we've talked about this too, mm. Tom, you have all the assets that you could absolutely just do 2016 again. Yes. Mm-hmm. The, <laughs> <laughs> those, the, 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 the young guys are there with the old hands. Um, it, I, I put you in a category of maybe seven who could win it this year. I don't, how do you feel? Yeah. I mean, if it all went right, yes, absolutely mm. Yeah, if it all went right at the right time, they've got they've got enough ingredients to make you know what you need to make to make a premiership in that. But it, it's the, the more interesting thing is exactly what you've talked about. It's like where are they with Bevo? Where's the club at? There's been a big club review. There's clearly, you know, I'm a Bevo believer. Like <laughs> I think he's earned it. Like as mm, I said, sure. I'd only ever I'd seen no. I'd lived to my mid-40s without ever seeing my team play in a grand final. Since Bevo's been coach, I've seen my team play in a grand final twice. Yeah. Right? Like, so, like, statistically, he can coach for another 80 years (laughs) and he's done his job, you know. (laughs) You know, I think he's earned it. But but obviously, I think he's a very good coach and maybe – the magic is like maybe it's so it's I, I want to see I think it's that sort of thing of either he'll be able to do something special with them again and yeah we'll have a crack or it might be the end of it yeah. that doesn't mean that he's a bad coach he could go somewhere else and absolutely do it again I think 100% no um, yeah. but maybe with that style of coach the big interesting question is that storyteller narrative coach so not the one you know the one who can go, here's who we are. This is the story of this year or what we're doing. Is that a limited entity? Mm. Can Does storytelling, like after a while, you, like, you know, it's like you run yeah. out of material. Yeah. Like I wish I hadn't spent all that good stuff in 2016. <laughs> we, we all <laughs> like, think uh, well, deep down, I don't know about you, Will, but Donna feel, Auntie Donna feels like we make one good comedy festival show every <laughs> second year. Mm. And if we, like, if Bevo had to only coach every yeah. second year, that might actually yeah. return more grand finals. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. yeah, that's right. He's like, I've got to have a year off. I've got to go and get some stories. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to go and get some anecdotes that I can use in my coaching. Yeah, if we ever get to the maturity of that level. The one thing I, I think is very exciting for the dogs, you talked about the review, is Peter Jackson, I think, is the Melbourne man that mm-hmm. changed everything for us. So if he's if he's doing good stuff in there, then all good. Um, I will say to our audience, Go listen to Two Guys, One Cup. It's a great way to micro-dose into the TOEFOP community and everything that they do. It's um, a lovely, lovely listen, mm. all available on the listener app, I believe now. Is that right? 
Yeah, but uh, so everything's at everyone relax now. And so when people are hearing this, Charlie and I are going to get together and do a little uh, new episode that will be on Everyone Relax. And then it, it, all our podcasts are now in the exact same place. So if you Google Everyone Relax, wherever you get your podcast, you should be able to find all our stuff. And Question Everything is on now or is it starting soon? Uh, Question Everything is finished for this year, but it's all available on ABC iView. People can check that out. And, oh, I have a tour. So oh, please. I, oh, we're going to do the tour, please. Yeah, I, I, so uh, Will Legitimate is the name of the show and I am uh, taking it to all the Australian places and you can just check my socials on my website or whatever for details. One of the great joys of my life is we did Montreal Just for Laughs in about 2017. I got to see uh, Will do his show in a in a smaller room than he would usually do just mm. to like – uh, just people who didn't weren't f- as familiar with his work, and I just saw him dominate for an hour, and it was one of the great joys. Go see Will if you can, and thanks Will for joining us. Go doggies, Tom. Yes. Anything to add? No. <laughs> <laughs> Bounce that pill. <laughs> <laughs>